Well, I'm not a fan of government employee unions. I think there's an inherent conflict of interest there, but uh, it's not right to, right to work deals with all industries. Uh, there's nothing wrong with private unions. I think they've got a purpose. Uh, but I don't think that they should have the power to force people to pay fair share fees or union dues uh, just to work in an industry uh, of their choosing. A good example is the child care unionization struggle that's been going on here. Yeah. We've got child care providers that are independent business owners that by the stroke of a pen could be unionized and forced to pay fair share fees just because yeah. they choose to be in that profession. I think that's wrong. No, Dan, but and the amendment would, would, would prohibit that. I want to give you a chance <coughs> to really respond to the bottom line issue. And that, those are <coughs> you know, sort of, we've heard those statements before. What is really, I mean, what is really the problem with the organized labor in terms of uh, its place in government? And why, why is that a problem right now? I mean, I want to give you a chance to respond to that real reason why you believe that's a problem. Well, um, well you've got the unions using dues collected from the employees that are a member of it to elect the politicians that are ultimately going to decide what uh, their salary sure. is. There's a conflict of interest. And so tax dollars wind up being used to fund unions and political activities. And it's a big problem. But that's a little bit separate from right to work. Right to work is just going to ensure that you aren't going to be forced to pay union dues uh, to work. Are we going to see something, you know, a la Scott Walker or in the Wisconsin thing? Is that what you, is that what you think is going to happen down up here? Or what, where, are you, where are you on this? Well, I think, uh, you know, um, photo ID, um, you know, the right to work for less, um, you know, uh, an anti-marriage amendment. You know, there are others out there, uh, potentially a supermajority amendment to raise taxes. Um, Really, what we're seeing is sort of a, a everything you know and the kitchen sink strategy from the, the very far right, and I think you know. And Representative Draskowski said this in the Winona paper a couple uh, weeks ago. Um, legislative Republicans haven't had control of both chambers in 38 years, and so they have um, a, a real go for broke strategy here. They want to put everything they can out. I think um, what's important to keep in Wasn't mind. Isn't that counterintuitive, Dan? I mean, to re-election if. If Minnesota voters are going to reject it, as some on the left have said, or Democrats, why would they make a, I mean, do you, do you buy any of the argument that the playing field is maybe tilted a little bit? Oh, I, I think without a doubt the playing field is tilted. I think it's tilted in the uh, direction of the largest corporations and wealthiest people in our state who have um, extraordinary influence of, over our elections. Meanwhile, uh, we're having a conversation about how to chip away at the voice of average people and make it that much harder for them to vote. Um, I think without a doubt, when you're talking about our democracy being under assault, it is under assault. It's under assault from these very forces that want to uh, undercut the ability of working people to earn a fair wage, undercut the ability of regular citizens to be able to cast a vote, um, undercut the ability of, of people to be able to uh, invest in their communities. I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary attempt, um, the likes of which we saw in Wisconsin. I think it remains to be seen what the reaction is, um, but it, it, is, it is certainly uh, an extraordinary move by legislative Republicans. 